Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do all things cameras with a dash of logs and a little bit of travel. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the Canon EOS R1, the upcoming flagship from Canon, and give my predictions about what the specs are gonna be. Now, if my predictions sound outlandish and delirious, well, I have COVID right now, so they probably are. But without further ado, let's get into it. I think that the Canon EOS R1 will come with a 50 megapixel stacked BSI sensor. Now, the reason that I'm coming to the 50 megapixel number is that Canon rumors said it was gonna have above the 45 megapixels of the R5. So how far above, they weren't sure. And to me, it really doesn't make much sense to go much more above 50 and really much more above 45. So if I had to guess, it's gonna be like 46 to 55. And so I'm just kind of putting it somewhere in the middle at 50. I really think 50 is a good sweet spot. It shows that they're competing at the same megapixel level as Sony, except I do think they're gonna go above and beyond Sony because I think they're gonna be offering up to 40 frames per second raw. So the reason that I come to this number is I'm pretty much making it up off the top of my head. No, the reason that I come to this number is, well, it'll essentially have been two years since the A1 when this thing actually comes out. They've known for a very long time what Sony has had to work with and what they've been offering. And also they know what the Z9 is offering. So I think that they wanna step it up above that number. Now, another reason I think that they can pull this off is the Digic X processor. I think they are gonna have two of those in this particular camera. And the reason I think they're gonna go that way is the chip shortages that are happening right now. I think it makes a lot more sense for them to be able to put two of those chips into one camera than having to develop and manufacture a whole new chip. So it makes sense to me that this will kind of have almost double the processing power of an R5. And if the R5 can shoot 45 megapixels at up to 20 frames per second, bumping it up to 50 megapixels and shooting 40 frames per second, really doesn't sound out of the question. Now moving over to the video specs, what do I think they're gonna be putting into this? Well, personally, I think you're gonna be getting 8K60, which is gonna be matching the Z9, but I do think it's gonna be coming out on day one, which right now the Z9 does not have 8K60. It is coming with a future firmware. When that firmware will be, I'm not exactly sure. But again, it makes sense to think that if you're gonna have two of those processors in this camera, bumming it up from 8K30 to 8K60 makes a lot of sense. But I do think it is gonna be downsampled from that 8.6K, like what Sony does with the Alpha One. But while we are talking about downsampling, I do think you're gonna get a 4K HQ but you're gonna get a 4K HQ up to 120 frames per second. Now, I'm kind of going out on a limb here and maybe that is not possible, but I really do think it makes sense for them to kind of just have everything congruent, saying this is what we can do and we can do it at the top of the top. Another reason that I think that they can offer that is going to be the bigger body. I think this is gonna have a similar body to the R3, meaning that it's not gonna have any overheating issues. It may even be slightly bigger because it's gonna have dual CF Express type B cards, or at least that's what I believe it's gonna have. Also, Canon Rumors said that they're planning on learning from the feedback of the R3, which leads me to this next part, which is the autofocus. I do think that we're gonna be getting quad pixel autofocus. That is something that was shown in patents that they've been working on in the past. It makes sense that with their new flagship camera, they would have the best of the best autofocus in it. And I do think that they're gonna be bringing over that eye tracking autofocus from the R3. It seems like a lot of people have had a pretty positive feedback on it. I think that they have probably have learned even more coming off of the R3 and they're gonna have like another year to work on it at this point. Going along with the improved autofocus, I do think they're gonna be adding more things that you can track, kind of like the Z9 does. And if they are getting feedback from the field from the R3, then I think that adding extra dynamic range to the R1 makes a whole lot of sense. I think there was rumors in the past saying it was gonna have like 20 stops of dynamic range. I do think that that is kind of out there and outlandish and not gonna happen, but I think that they're gonna try to match Sony as best that they can here. They may even try to go over Sony, say 16 stops at dynamic range. I think it will be interesting to see, but I do think that that's gonna be something that they're working on. Now you may be thinking to yourself, these are a whole lot of specs and this sounds awesome, but how much is it gonna cost and when is it gonna come out? 
Well, I'll answer the second part first because I think that's a little bit easier to nail down. I really think this is gonna come out in a prototype model for the World Cup, which is at the end of this year. I can really see them doing the announcement before the World Cup, giving all the specs, but not really giving it into people's hand until close to December, maybe late December or even early January of next year. So that makes the most sense to me. Kind of think like what the Z9 has done with the Olympics of this year and what they've done with getting it in the hands of people saying it was a 2021 camera, even though it was shipping out December 24th. And even that was in very limited supply. I can see Canon doing the exact same thing with the R1 at the end of this year. Now, when it comes to price, it's a little bit harder to nail down. The R3 came in at $6,000, which in comparison to the $5,500 Z9, really sounds expensive when you compare the specs, at least on paper. So where do I think that this camera is gonna come in? Personally, I do not see it going over $7,000, but I really don't see it going much under $7,000. So I would kind of put it in somewhere between the $6,500 mark, even maybe up to say $6,899, just so they're saying that they're under $7,000. I really think that they're gonna say this camera is worth it because it's the best of the best of everything that we have to offer in this style of body at least. I really think that's gonna be their mindset. I think that the Nikon Z9 did something excellent, which is coming in at $5,500 and being somewhat of a budget camera, at least when it comes to the flagships. But I do not think that Canon is near the same position that Nikon's in right now. Nikon was really trying to make a big splash into the mirrorless market. They had had trouble getting people to adopt over from the DSLR cameras. So I think having a, you know, quote unquote, budget friendly flagship made sense. But with Canon, they've already got a lot of people and a big industry going over to the mirrorless market already. I think they're really just gonna be throwing the kitchen sink at it when it comes to specs. But I think if you're planning on getting this camera, you're gonna be expected to pay a whole lot for it. But those are just my thoughts about this camera. What do you think? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. And if you appreciate me doing a video, even though I have COVID right now, then consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And until next time, peace.